We live in the most interesting of times. Elon Musk just said this last night. This recent comment about SpaceX's plans have left some uncertainty, but it seems that the company is gearing up for Starship's first orbital flight. They are currently assembling the fully integrated Starship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 for the fourth and final time with the expectation of a successful outcome. Earlier on the 31st of March, three SPMTs, two that will move the ship and one to bring counterweights, were moved to the rocket garden to pick up S-24 for a move. In the meantime, S-24 has had her lower flaps chained. At the launch pad, the orbital launch tower chopsticks also moved from Booster 7 to the receiving position for S-24. As planned, the Cameron County, Texas Sheriff has issued a notice of a Saturday, April 1st, 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. closure. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Measuring around 120 meters or 390 feet tall, from ship tip to booster tail, the fully stacked rocket is again the largest ever assembled. Compared to the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets that SpaceX currently operates, Starship is far larger. It's also meant to be fully reusable, while the Falcon family, which discards its orbital upper stage, is roughly 80% reusable. If SpaceX can meet its technical goals, Starship could eventually cost around a magnitude less to launch than Falcon, while carrying roughly 5 to 20 times more payload per launch. In short, it could revolutionize the cost of access to orbit. Combined with orbital refueling and the ability to transfer propellant between starships, reusable starships could also radically exceed Falcon 9 or even Falcon Heavy's expendable performance. But first, SpaceX needs to prove if Starship can even reach orbit at all. Compared to Ship 20 and Booster 4, earlier prototypes that were also fully stacked a few times in 2021 and early 2022 before their retirement, Ship 24 and Booster 7 are closer to supporting Starship's first orbital launch attempt. After the full stack milestone, they could be just a few small tests away from being cleared for flight. And as for the FAA license, I have good news for you in the next episode. But if you aren't already so completely psyched for the upcoming OFT, Ryan Hansen Space will definitely put ants in your pants with this amazing video. With the link below, go ahead and enjoy it. Once again, what an unbelievably incredible project. As always, Ryan, incredible work. Meanwhile, Ship 26 had all three RVAC engines installed. The center engines that are being installed feature the electric thrust vector control system, making Ship 26 the first Starship prototype to receive upgraded Raptor engines. Ship 26 will now be ready for static fire tests. For now, however, SpaceX's priority is preparing Ship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 for Starship's first orbital launch attempt, followed by preparing Ship 25 and Booster 9 for the second orbital test flight. Until then, Ship 26 will likely remain in safe mode. On top of that, Starship just received a new contract about a future moon project. Lunar rover developer Astro Lab has signed an agreement with SpaceX to transport its first rover to the moon on a future Starship voyage. Astro Lab said it has arranged to fly the Flexible Logistics and Exploration, or FLEX, rover it is developing as a payload on a Starship lunar lander mission scheduled for as soon as mid-2026. The company did not disclose the value of the agreement, which Astro Lab says is the first commercial contract SpaceX has signed for lunar cargo delivery. Jared Matthews, founder and chief executive of Astrolab, said in an interview that the mission, which will include a thousand kilograms of customer payloads, will be the first flight of the Flex rover. It'll be a rideshare payload on a Starship mission landing somewhere in the south polar region of the moon. Astrolab has not disclosed specific customers for the mission, but they said they have a variety of planned applications from resource utilization to data. We are taking care of the core functions of mobility, navigation, communication, and power, and that allows them to really focus on whatever they want to specifically achieve, he said, adding that Astrolab expects to announce details about its customers in the coming months. The company unveiled its plans for Flex a year ago after performing tests of a prototype in the California desert. The design is now at about the preliminary design review stage of maturity. Matthews said, with a particular focus on a robotic arm for the rover that has six degrees of freedom for deploying instruments or other payloads. 
He emphasized more on the benefits that the Rover's modular design provides to potential customers. This modular concept allows us to have adaptive utility, he said. You land new implements or new cargo over time, and it refreshes. It renews what you can do with the platform. That's our big differentiator. Astrolab is preparing to offer Flex to NASA for the agency's upcoming Lunar Terrain Vehicle Competition. NASA is expected to issue a call for proposals by May for the LTV, which will be used by astronauts on missions starting with Artemis V in the late 2020s, as well as be able to be controlled robotically between human landings. And for our last bit of news, ULA Centaur Stage has run into an anomaly. On Wednesday night, United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno said via Twitter that there was an issue with the Vulcan rocket's upper stage during qualification testing at Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama. During qual testing of Centaur 5 structural article at MSFC, the hardware experienced an anomaly. This is why we thoroughly and rigorously exercise every possible condition on the ground before flight. Investigation is underway. Vulcan will fly when complete. No one was injured during the accident. Bruno sought to downplay the significance of the failure to Vulcan's debut flight, which will take place no earlier than May 4th. Bruno said the failure occurred at extreme structural load testing of various worst possible conditions, and added in another tweet that this was very unlikely to have implications on the Centaur to be used for Vulcan's debut flight. Even so, ULA is not a company that regularly goes around blowing stuff up. No matter what, the company will need to spend some time understanding how and why this anomaly happened. Additionally, Dream Chaser's ripple will affect Vulcan. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser spacecraft will now launch no earlier than mid-December. The spacecraft was to be the payload for the Vulcan rocket's second certification mission for the Space Force, known as CERT-2. United Launch Alliance is intent on flying two certification missions for Vulcan so it can complete paperwork for the US Space Force and begin launching lucrative missions for the military. And the rocket will be ready when? The nominal plan for these certification launches entail flying Astrobotics Lunar Lander on the SERP-1 mission in May and Dream Chaser on SERP-2 in August. However, since Dream Chaser is delayed, it is possible that ULA will fly a mass simulator for Vulcan's second mission. However, it's also possible that there will be additional delays in Vulcan's testing and launch preparations, and that the vehicle will not be ready for a second flight before the end of this year. It's definitely something to keep an eye on for the remainder of 2023, no doubt. But that's it for today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.